Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. Last week, Google announced that it would support some IPTC metadata fields in Google Images. This is good news indeed, and this makes it an excellent time to go over applying metadata to our pictures in various software. For this video, we'll be using XNView. XNView is an extremely affordable browsing and metadata editing application. So let's get going. Before we apply any metadata to anything, the critical first step is to make sure that we have a template to apply our standing metadata to our pictures. Now, in fact, the new fields, or the fields that Google is newly supporting, are all fields that you'll find in your standing template. So here we have before us a template downloaded from my website, and this template is in the form of a JPEG image with metadata attached. So in XNView, by using Command-I, or we could use the menu or the right-click menu, we will bring up XNView's Metadata Editor. And as you can see, it's a tabbed sort of affair. And in it, we see the values from our template. Now, the way a template works, or the way a starter template like this one works, is you basically go through here and it is placeholder text, and you replace all the placeholder text with information that pertains to you. So here at the back of the caption, we have a credit line or a byline already here. This is photo by Joe Photographer. You fill in your name. And if you don't like photo by, if you prefer photo in a colon or something else, you do that too. Uh, also on this page, and some people don't notice this, the caption writer uh, field already has a placeholder with Joe's initials in it. So you should change that to your own. Nothing on the keywords field that we have to worry about here. Categories, same thing. Categories are deprecated. Some companies use them, some don't. We probably don't have to worry about them at all. On the credits tab, we find some fields, including the three that are important to Google. Here we have the byline field, otherwise known as the creator field. It's the creator field in the IPTC standard, and Google's calling it the creator field. IPTC used to call this the byline field. I've seen photographer and author used as well. In any case, that's pretty obvious. Your name goes there. Byline title is a field that is used within some companies. We can safely skip it. Down at the bottom, we have a copyright field. The copyright is one of the three fields that Google is now supporting. The other two being the creator and or byline and the credit or credit line field. Let's take a look at the copyright field. A copyright notice has basically got three elements. First, it has the word copyright or the copyright symbol. Second, it has the year of first publication of the work, or if the work's not published, the year the work was created. We're talking about Google Images here, so that implies publication. Either way, it's probably this year. Then we have the name of the copyright holder. Most of the time, that's the same thing as the creator. Sometimes it's not. If a photographer works full-time for a company and makes images as part of their employment, the copyright holder would be that company. Sometimes photographers will work as a work-for-hire arrangement, freelance photographers this is, and in a case like that, the client would own the copyright. And you can transfer a copyright to any third-party entity. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it is possible to do. So in any case, here we have the owner of the copyright. A copyright notice is not actually required since about 1989. You won't hurt your copyright if you don't have one at all. And in fact, the format of the copyright notice is really dictated by custom rather than requirement. So as long as you communicate what you need to communicate you're fine. Doesn't matter whether you use the symbol or the word copyright or whatever. The Copyright Office says that 
it is advantageous to include a copyright notice with your work. Bit of an understatement right there, but we'll let that go. One of the advantages of having a copyright notice, according to the Copyright Office and also according to Common Sense, is that honest would-be users of the work can use the information in the copyright notice to contact the copyright owner, presumably to obtain a license for the work. For that reason, I highly recommend that you do as Joe did here and put some sort of very brief contact information right in your copyright notice. Joe put in his phone number. It could be a URL or maybe even an email address. Now, some people also put a rights statement in their copyright notice. Typically, it says, all rights reserved. Frankly, I think there are better places in the metadata for that particular kind of statement, but if there's room, feel free to put it here. Now, at the moment, as I record this, Google is supporting the creator field and the credit line field. The copyright field is coming in, as they say, coming weeks. So we don't know if there are going to be any presentation restrictions on this field, if there's going to be a character limit or if it's going to be multi-line or whatever. So we'll have to wait and see a little bit. It's pretty certain that you can probably get your phone number in here unless your name is enormously long, particularly if you use the copyright symbol instead of the word copyright. But we'll have to wait and see how much will fit. Now, what about that rights statement line, all rights reserved, or something of that nature? And a consideration here is if you're doing photos under Creative Commons license, it would be a pretty good idea to put your Creative Commons license statement here in the back end of your copyright statement as well, because that would give a would-be user basically all the information that they would need to legally use the photo. Once again, bearing in mind that caveat of we don't exactly know what Google is going to do to us. But nevertheless, in the metadata, that would be a pretty good idea. So where should that right statement actually go if it's going somewhere else in the metadata? Well, normally, I would suggest the rights usage terms field, because that's exactly what that field is for. However, in XNView, there is a limitation. XNView does not support the entire core schema of the IPTC standard. It supports a subset of it. It's not totally uncommon for software to do this. And in any case, the fields that XNView does not support includes the contact fields like physical address and email address and telephone number for the photographer, and also, unfortunately, missing is the rights usage terms field. However, I have suggested many times that the rights usage terms field and the special instructions field overlap. And in fact, I generally suggest that if you have rights information that's really important to get across, given that some software does not support the rights usage terms field, put it in special instructions. And that would be my advice here. If you have a right statement like that that you want to include and you're using XNView, this would be the place to put it here in special instructions. And I suppose at this point, I should put in the disclaimer that this is not legal advice. And if you have special and specific needs, you should seek out a good copyright attorney. Copyright attorneys need love too. So if you need one, hire one. Now, the third field that Google is supporting in Google Images is this one. The field that XNView calls credits, Google calls it credit, the IPTC calls it credit line. And this is perhaps the most confusing field in the world of metadata. For years and years, I've been explaining this field to various people, to software developers, to photographers, to designers, to all sorts of people with varying degrees of success because it isn't really the most straightforward concept ever. So here it goes. At one time, this field was called the provider field, and that actually, I think, shed more light on its function than credit, which is the traditional name for the field. In any case, this is where 
the name of the organization that is responsible for the image or is distributing the image goes. Individual photographers, by and large, have been able to just simply avoid using this field altogether because it didn't apply. But if you look at credit lines, let's take a practical example that might make this a little bit easier. Joe Radel is a staff photographer for Getty Images. So if you've seen Joe's work on news websites and you've seen his byline, it's Joe Radel and usually a slash, maybe a dash or something else, Getty Images. Okay, Joe Radel goes here, where our placeholder text says Joe Photographer, and Getty Images goes here in the credit field. If you're a photographer, another simple way to think about it is the credit field is simply who you're working for. And generally, a client, if they give you a metadata template, will indicate how they want you to treat the credit field. Okay, fine. So far, so good. But over the years, many people have used the credit field differently. And perhaps the most common, shall we say, abuse of the credit field is to put the entire credit or byline string that you would like to appear with your picture in this field. So, Joe Photographer slash Susie and Joe Studio. Now, this makes me crazy because we're mixing two different kinds of data in one field, and there's just no good that can come of that. But we don't know how Google Images users are going to treat this field. And frankly, Google is the 800 million pound behemoth. However, Google users decide that this field should be treated is how we're going to have to treat it, my sensibilities notwithstanding. So for the time being, if you're an individual photographer, you can just put your name in this field. That'll be totally fine. And if you do have an organization that needs to be credited, well, wait and see. I guess start out for the time being doing it the way Susie and Joe have done it here, which is more or less the right way. Although the IPTC has lately liberalized their view of how this field should be used, and they're tolerant of the notion of the entire byline string being in this field. So those are the three Google fields that we need to worry about in our template. And we'll take a quick look here at the other tabs in X and View and see what we have. The status field, or I'm sorry, the status tab really doesn't have any fields that you're likely to need. Edit status is deprecated, priority similarly. The job ID field, you'll either need to use or you won't need to use according to your company or client requirements. Most of us simply don't need to. The date and time fields will be filled in on automatically. And in the source tab, we have some fields that are about the photo or the location where the photo was shot. And in our starter template, I've filled these in with this string here, the city, the state, the country, and there is a country code here. And in XN view, you can just pick it from a list. So if you happen to be working in Burundi, you're good to go. Let's change that to the United States or someplace where some of our viewers are likely to be. United States is pretty good. I live in the United States. So there we are. Remember how I said that XNView does not support the contact fields in the core of the IPTC standard? Well, let's go for a moment back to the credits tab and take a look at something here. We have a field in XNView called contact. You can actually put contact information in this field, and XNView will actually write it to an old field in the IIM data block. However, no other software that I'm aware of other than XNView reads or writes to that particular field. So in other words, if you put your contact information in here, nobody is going to contact you because nobody is ever going to see it. So bear that in mind. And I actually think that maybe you could use the special instruction field for some contact information if, in fact, you're using XNView. 
So there we are. Once we've gone through our template and edited it all to suit, we will simply hit the Save Template button and give it a name. and save it out. And now when we want to use it in XNView, we just hit the load button and we pick it out of the list and we'll be good to go. For the purposes of this video, we'll leave the starter template as it is. We'll leave it filled in for Joe Photographer. Now we've got our template all ready to go. So now let's go get some demo pictures and we will apply some metadata to them. So we will go to our camera's memory card, or in this case, to a make-believe memory camera memory card. It's a real memory card, but we're making believe it's from a camera. And we will grab this set of photos. And here they are. They have arrived in XN view, and as a matter of fact, they're all selected. So we will simply do either Command I, or we can use the menu, and we can go to Edit. IPTC XMP metadata, and we'll bring up the IPTC editor. We go to load template. We choose the template we want from the list. We hit OK, and we say write to all files. Yes, bang, it's done. So now we can already see in the browser that each one of these files has our template metadata written to it. And there we are. So as far as taking advantage of Google's new support for metadata is concerned, we've done the deed. And it took what? I don't know, three, three clicks in a row? It took maybe a second or so to put templated metadata on all these photos. But really, we're only halfway there. One of the great powers of photography is its specificity. Photos depict, usually, a specific event, or a specific person, or a specific object. And if we know exactly who and what is in the photo, it has a great deal of more significance and more power than if we don't know. And we're marking these pictures up basically for anybody and everybody coming along. So we need to communicate to the outside world what's going on in our picture. We're also marking these pictures up for our own purposes. We're going to have to find them later in our own collection. And the best way to do that is to have some search words available. And the best way to do that is to write an appropriate caption. Now, I've written about writing good captions many times. If you go to my blog and search for caption, you will find quite a lot of material on writing good captions. So let's go ahead and write some individual captions for our individual pictures. Now, I'll actually go ahead and cancel out of the IPTC editor in that view, and we'll bring up our picture in the one up preview view. New in the last version or two of XNView MP is a feature where we can call the IPTC editor from the one up preview with the command I keystroke. And this is actually a pretty nice improvement in XN view. In any case, here we go. Let's add a caption. Okay, so as I had typed it several times normal speed, we can see that XN view does not have a spell check in its IPTC editor. And if you need a spell check, and heaven knows I probably do, there are ways around that. You can use a text editor and cut and paste or whatever. In any case, we'll go back here and clean up any typos that we find and look at what we've got. Records wait for customers at Jones Records in any town USA. Widget Co., which is our favorite imaginary company and a frequent client of Susie and Joe Photographer, is expanding into the music business and is buying up local record stores. I knew there'd be at least one more typo, including Jones, which, frankly, folks, we probably all consider to be pretty lamentable. The rest of our template 
is already here. And we can simply apply this and we can move on to the next picture and repeat the process. But wait a minute. If we're marking up a whole folder full of pictures, some elements of our caption, and particularly some elements of our keywords, might be common to more than one photo. So we're back at this picture, for which we've already made a caption. Now, how can we copy the whole of our IPTC metadata from one picture to another in XNView? XNView doesn't have a function to do that directly, but it's actually pretty simple. We will just take this caption that we've already made, and while we're here, let's add a keyword or two, just for the sake of it. We'll say music is an okay keyword, and it's about a record store, so we'll add retail as a keyword. And there we go. Now, keywords are just search terms that might not be in your caption that might help you find your photo later. They're specific to you and your system and your needs and your method of data management. And yes, as you move forward and you go from one software to another, that implies already a tricky business because you're not going to know what the new system is really going to be like. But that is another story for another day. For us, for the moment, the takeaway is Captions are mandatory. Keywords are optional. In some places, stock photography, for example, that relationship is different. And keywords are very, very important. They're the most important thing. I would submit that you still need to specifically say what's in every picture. So you're still going to need a caption regardless. On this channel and in my blog, I've written rather extensively about keywording and the considerations for starting a keywording program. And you can look up those resources if you want to know more about keywording. For our purposes here, it's good enough that we just have a couple of keywords. So in lieu of a direct mechanism for copying our IPTC data or part of it from one photo in this set to another, what we're going to do is we're going to save a new template with this specific IPTC information. And I'm just going to use this template here called test and OK it. And XNView allows us to overwrite an existing template. In other words, I can keep that test template around and I can use it over and over again as a rubber stamp to move data from one picture to another. So, OK. We can cancel out of the IPTC editor and we'll go find another photo. Let's find another photo in this folder that has something to do with record stores. We'll take this one here and we'll open the IPTC editor and we'll load template and we'll load the template that has our caption on it. But wait, didn't we just overwrite all the other information that was already on this picture? Yes, we did. But these are new pictures. And the information that's on these pictures, we just put there. It just came from our base template, which was on the picture that we copied to make this rubber stamp template. So in other words, we overwrote, say for instance, Joe Photographer's creator field with Joe Photographer, the same value that was in it in the first place. So no blood, no foul. We can do that. Now we look at our caption and our caption is like most captions. The first sentence of the caption refers to what's going on specifically in this particular picture. The second sentence of the caption, and they very typically have three, by the way, this one only has two, is background or context information that's applicable to any pictures of record stores in this set of pictures. So we've just pasted our rubber stamp template onto this picture, which really doesn't necessarily show records waiting for customers at Jones Records. Here we have customers already here. So we'll just delete that and we'll go back and we'll save it back to our rubber stamp, in this case, without that first sentence. We can go ahead and write it onto that photo. And then we can find another photo 
or maybe even a couple of more photos, like so, and we can go back, load our rubber stamp template, okay, and here we go. We have our caption, the second sentence of it only, waiting for us to write a unique first sentence for each one of these captions. And I can write that to all of those files. There we go. Oops, it looks like I left both of those files selected. So I'll do right to all files. And we'll go back and clean up our mistake off this file here. So there it is. We've applied metadata to a folder full of files in XN view. It was pretty quick, it was pretty easy, and we really have all the functionality that we need to do the job. Some of the fancier functions of, say, Photo Mechanic are not here. But then again, this program costs a fraction of what Photo Mechanic does. And we do have the caveat about subsetting the core schema of IPTC fields. Now, the fields that XNView does write, XNView writes correctly to the appropriate data blocks. So frankly, that's no big deal for us. XNView remains a great value and a viable choice for doing your metadata work. So be sure to look in the description down below for the link to those starter templates and for links to relevant posts from my blog. Reach out in the comments or on social media and let us know how it's going. What does this Google thing mean to you? And of course, thanks for watching. And as always, until next time, mind your metadata.